So good morning to all of you all. Yeah, now I can see you much better. So today we are going to reflect upon the limitless faithfulness and mercy of our Lord. How God's faithfulness and mercy sustains us through this journey. We are going through different seasons in our life. And all through these seasons, during hardships and good times, it's all, we have only one thing, that is the faithfulness and mercy of God that truly keeps us in the right direction and holds on to our ground so that our journey will be according to how God has ordained us to be. Because we all know it is said in Romans 3.23 for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So in the beginning itself Though when God created Adam and Eve, they were covered with the glory of God, but when they sinned, they were separated from God. But now, we have an opportunity. God has given us and made the way for us to have an eternal life with Him. As you see, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So none of y'all can say we have reached the limit what God really wants. But God has, because of his mercy and faithfulness, he has made the way for each and every one of us to have an eternal life with him not because of our good things that we have done, because of his love, his mercy. Because his mercy offer, offers us forgiveness, restoration, and a new beginning, giving us a hope and strength to endure the journey of this life with our Lord. It is said in Lamentations 3, 22 to 23, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So as we sang today, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. They are new every morning. This is something that we have to keep in mind. How fallen we are. God is always there to reconcile us back to him. Because sometimes we undermine God's love and faithfulness. And we think we are not worthy of his calling. But as the word says, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. So we don't run out of God's mercy. So when we look at God's mercy and faithfulness, there are attributes of God that we have to know that God's faithfulness and mercies are there <coughs> from the beginning till the end. So one attribute that we know is God's unchanging nature. God never changes from eternal past to eternal future. He is the same. So when we are focusing on faithfulness of God, we have to keep in mind that God is never changing. His unchanging nature. 
So it is said in Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So these verses beautifully summarizes how reliable, how faithful our Lord is. Isn't it? It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So it tells us that Jesus Christ who is full of God is unchanging. So his essence, the character and the purpose throughout all times remains the same. So it doesn't shift from time to time. So that's a comfort that we need to hold on to, isn't it? Are you with me? That we worship a God who is not changing. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And also, God, He has an eternal nature. It is said in Psalms 92, Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. So we are talking of a God who has been there from eternal past, as I mentioned before. So his faithfulness and mercies are also the same. All this we, I know all of us who are seated here, knows about it. But what happens is, Sometimes during our walk, through the hardships that we go through, the turbulences that we face, we tend to forget them. So that's why I thought of reminding of God's faithfulness and mercy in our lives. His eternal nature and the next attribute is God's unchanging character. He has a character that never changes. Because when we look at ourselves, our character changes from season to season. And with what type of people we associate with, isn't it? If we are associating good people, we have a good character. If we continue to be with bad people who don't have a good character, our character too will change. So, our, though our character changes from time to time or with whom we associate with, but we, if we continue to associate with the one person, one God who is unchanging, will be able to have a character that is not changing. Do you understand my point? If we continue to associate and have a relationship with the God who doesn't wave from time to time, it is said in Malachi 3, 6, God himself declares this. The Lord do not change. So you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. So another thing that we need to keep in mind is, since we worship a God who is not changing, we are rest assured. And here it says, God himself declares that we will not be perished, we will not be destroyed because of his unchanging character. As we all know, as first, uh, in the mention, this verse is not there, First Peter 5, 8 says, we have an enemy who is circling around us to 
grab us away from the love of God. But since God's love is there, His faithfulness, mercy, if we hold on to it, and if we hold on to this character of God, we will not be destroyed by this enemy who is trying to take us away. These are some, these are some things that you need to keep in mind so that as we walk, we will not fall away. Because something that I have seen in the lives of the Christians is that we start very big and down the line, one by one, with the hardships that we face, falls away. So in order for us to have a firm commitment and to walk upright with God, we need to hold on to these truths about God, about His eternal nature, because we are worshipping God who has an eternal nature, an unchanging character, and God's unchanging promises. When He makes a promise, He keeps them. But if you look at ourselves, if you look at around the world, people make many promises and they don't keep up these promises. And we are living in an environment where people don't hold on to their promises. But there's one promise that we hold on to. So if we hold on to this promise, we can be people who will keep the promise. We will, we will not be people who will break in promises. Isn't it? Because when we walk, we see people, even at workplace maybe, even with people whom we associate, they make many promises. But sometimes they don't keep it. And we also think, okay, if others don't keep their promises, we also don't have to keep the promise. But if we are worshipping a God, who is unchanging, who has a character that doesn't change, and who keeps his promises. And we are his followers. And we need to have that same character, and we have to keep these promises, what we make. And, if it, and at the same time, don't make promises that you cannot keep. Sometimes, maybe at workplace or with your friends, for the love of it, you just say, I promise that I will do this. But underneath, you know, but this promise that I made, I cannot keep. It should not be the case with all of us who believe in a God who is faithful and so merciful, who has a character that doesn't change and who keeps his promises. We being his children, we have to hold on to our promises. We have to keep them. Otherwise, it's better not promise them. Are you with me or because of the cold weather you are sleeping? I hope not. So I see some smiles. Okay, that's good. That's a comfort. Because when you are up here, if you feel, if you see some confused faces, you tend to see whether what I'm 
delivering whether you all understand or not. Isn't it? So another thing that we have to look at is we believe in a God. We look up, look, we look up to a God who is not changing in his purpose. It is said in uh, Isaiah 46, 9 to 10, and God declares this. Remember the former things, those long ago. I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times. What is still to come, I say, my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. So this verse itself says, whatever the purpose and plan that God has for each and every one of us, he has blessed us accordingly and he wants to fulfill those promises that he has made to each and every one of us. These purposes which he has for each and every one of us during our lifetime. For an example, if you look at Moses, from the time Moses was born, he had a purpose in his life. One day, he had to deliver the people of the nation of Israel from Egypt to the promised land. That was his purpose. But down the line, he ran away, but again God reconciled him, brought him back, and used for that purpose. So even for us, it's the same. Sometimes we think we don't have a purpose in our life. God has no purpose in our lives. I'm just living for the sake of it. I'm living because my parents have given birth to me, so I had to live my life until I die away. No. We need to give value to each and every one of our lives. I'm telling. Because God has given a value. That value he paid from his own life. So just imagine, God paid this value from his own life to save you and bring him back to, bring us all back to him. Because each and every one of us who are seated here and who is, who is, whoever is living in the world has a purpose to fulfill. And as we are children of God, we hear how the Holy Spirit is leading us through this purpose. But if we continue not to listen to him, and if we try to undermine ourselves, we will not be serving the purpose, isn't it? So we need to give value to who we are, how, God, how much God has valued us. And don't let anyone put you down as well. If God has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of, of you, what, what matter, what, whatever the things or obstacle that comes on your way, don't let that Obstacle to take you away from the purpose you have been called to. This is very important. Because if you have a purpose, for sure, there will be many difficulties that you will face and many obstacles. It was the same with Moses. But if we run away from this purpose, we will not be able to serve the Almighty God because He has valued us so much. 
I'm pondering on this because some people, they just come to this earth, they just live, they just die away without serving the purpose God has brought him to this world. So we don't have to be a people, group of people like that, aren't we? Isn't it? Because more higher the purpose, the more the enemy will strike you. You know how much Jesus was tempted to take him away from this purpose. We see how our forefathers were tempted. But they hold, held on to their purpose. Otherwise, there won't be anything for us to talk about. So if, if there's something for the people, the generations to speak about, we have to hold on to our purposes. Do you understand? Because God really wants this message about this purpose to be told to you and it's very important. I don't know why I am repeating this so much, but each and every one of us has this calling. You have to fulfill that. Don't run away. So the next is the Jesus Christ, the unchanging mediator. We have a mediator in all these situations. It says in Hebrews 7, 24 to 25. But because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. So, we have a mediator. We are not alone in this walk, aren't we? Sometimes we will feel lonely, but don't feel that because we have a mediator who is God himself to intercede for us. Because it says we can trust in God's eternal nature, his consistent character, his reliable promises, his steadfast love towards us, towards the purpose that we are ordained for, and the enduring work of Jesus Christ. So, we have talked about Jesus Christ, the unchanging mediator, God's unchanging purpose in our lives, his unchanging promises, his unchanging character, so what can we get from all this? We worship a God who is not changing. We too have to be the same way. We have to walk uprightly with him. Isn't it? And the next attribute that we are going to look at, we will go through some scripture verse, uh, verses from the Bible, how God has been faithful throughout with our forefathers. We, know, we talk of Abraham, Joseph, Moses, David, Noah, how God has been faithful. But we are not going to talk all about them. We will take a few examples to see how God has been faithful in their lives. So if you look at the Old Testament, we see how faithful God was to Abraham. God gave a promise to Abraham. 
and he held on to it. In difficult situations, in situations where even Sarah and Abraham thought, no, this is not going to work. Sarah was barren and Abraham was very old. So if you think physically, that cannot be done. But in the midst of all this, still, God says that he is going to be, he will become a great nation, have numerous descendants, and be a blessing to all nations. So we see the birth of Isaac, and we see how God was able to be faithful unto them, and how God fulfill his promise to him. And the next is about the Exodus, how God used Moses to take the Israelites away from Egypt to the promised land. Through a series of miracles to de uh, that is to demonstrate his faithfulness to God, to his people. He could have just taken them away, but he, he wanted to make a point in all these miracles that he did. If you look one by one. And the next is about how God provided them for them during this wilderness journey as they left Egypt until they reached the promised land throughout these 40 years how God protected them. They were a bunch of people who were complaining, who had no trust in God, but God held on to his bargain, his side. He said he's going to deliver them from the Egyptians and send, take them to the promised land. And through this journey, he provided for them he was with them. So it is the same. The next point is, as they reach the promised land, they, God promised them with a land flowing with milk and honey. But in order to capture this, there were so many obstacles, but all through those, God was with them and they were able to come to the promised land. So we see in the Old Testament how God was faithful and held on to his promise. Isn't it? I'm just reminding, which we all know, but sometimes, as I mentioned before, we tend to forget this, and we, we just go back to our old lives. So, these are all reminders. I'm reminding you, okay? And then the, the, in the New Testament, we see how the manifestation and the ministry of Lord Jesus Christ, how God faithful, faithful displayed his promise to us, his faithfulness by sending his only son to make the way to show us the way. Because in the Old Testament, all throughout, it is said about a Messiah who is going to save his people. So if Messiah didn't come at the right ordained time, then we can say God has not fulfilled his promise. But he sent him at the right time as he promised. And the next is about his covenant. It is in, in Hebrews 8.13. By calling this covenant new, he made the first one obsolete. And what is obsolete and outdated will soon disappear. So through Jesus Christ, God establishes a new covenant that was also promised about forgiveness and a personal relationship with God himself. 
So this new covenant fulfilled all the promises of the old covenants and it completed to endure us, all of us, in this journey. And the next is resurrection and the coming of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus never wanted us to be orphans when we went and sat on the right hand side of God. He sent, he promised that he would be sending the Holy Spirit. And as he promised, he sent the Holy Spirit. So, what do we have to get from all this? God is unchanging, his character, his nature, and he is able to keep his promises and he fulfills his promises. And what do we have to do in this? We have to be a people who are going to fulfill what is, as I mentioned before, the purpose and plan that is ordained for us. Otherwise, if we don't fulfill these promises or this purpose in our lives, whom is God going to use? He will use someone else. So, we can also see how, as I mentioned before, his steadfast love and his faithfulness throughout our trials and temptations. It is said in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. God says, uh, it says, God is faithful and will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But with the temptation, will also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So when we are called by this purpose, and we will go through many trials and temptations, just hold on to them. Because God will not be, allow you to be tempted beyond you can take. Sometimes you feel, I can't take this, but just be rest assured. Whatever the temptation or trial that you are facing right now, God really knows how much you can take it and you will not be allowed to take beyond it. Because God doesn't want to destroy you in the first place. Because if God wants that, wanted to destroy all of us, he wouldn't have sent his only son, isn't it? If God wanted each and every one of us to perish, not doing anything, he would have paid this price. So when we see these promises, we need to hold on to them without just letting them go, without forgetting them. What really happens with, our, with us is we forget and we take into granted and we think we undermine ourselves, something that I really feel in Christians. But in the circular world, I don't see this, although they are not believers. They just, if they fix on something, they just go towards it like an arrow. Sometimes when we look at some things, when we fix on something, we just wave around. Okay, now God doesn't love me. God is not going to fulfill his promise in our lives. It's not going to be the case. I'm telling you. We see how people in the circular world are blessed and God wants to bless us even beyond that as his children. Because we have a plan and a purpose.
So, we talked about how faithful, how God promises, how full God fulfills His promises in our lives. It is said in Psalms 40, from 9 to 10, I proclaim your saving acts in the great assembly. I do not steal, seal my lips, Lord, as you know. I do not hide your righteousness in my heart. I speak of your faithfulness and your saving help. I do not conceal your love and your faithfulness from the great assembly. This is what King David said in the assembly. He said, I don't want to conceal anything that you have done in my life. So are there things in your life God has done which you don't want to conceal? You want to give glory to God by testifying? So you can this you, in a few minutes if you want you can testify how God has been good to you how God has fulfilled his promises in your life because through this we can edify we can glorify God and we can help our brethren to be strong in the Lord, knowing that the same God who fulfilled the promises as mentioned in the Bible is fulfilling them in our lives as we see. So anyone wants to come and testify about God's goodness today? kind of cold but just don't be just don't sit on just want to God wants you to testify testify how faithful and how he fulfilled his promises in your life for sure I will start with one thing that I have been I used to tell for the past two years now I'll just, even today I will tell because that's something I thank God on a daily basis to God. I have mentioned this before also, but just to start with it, I will reveal, just testify how God was able to heal me. I went through a situation where there was a severe pain in my right hand from neck to the full right hand. All the specialists, the neurosurgeons said they have to make an operation. Not, not one, many. But when I held on to God's promise of healing, God was able to heal me 100%. So whenever I wear a t-shirt or a shirt, I thank God. Because if not for that, I wouldn't have been able to stand here or to lie down because of, without his uh, healing. So the same way I testify about one thing that God has done every time, I, if you all have anything, just you may have shared before, maybe. Just to testify his, about his goodness, how faithfulness is, you can just come and testify.
So there's one bowl. You always hear my voice anyway. I couldn't sit there and wait, uh, having seen his faithfulness for the last 36 years. Um, he said, when we came here, you will have brothers, sisters, houses, lands, with persecution. He was very faithful in everything you mentioned there. And then uh, Ranil had a, uh, an accident in his eye where eventually the doctor said it has to be removed and the Lord restored his vision and the eye and he was able to keep his eye. And then I had a tumor in my brain and I would have been lost to my children, to my family. And it, I came off with paracetamol, having been under the, uh, in, in uh, Colin Summersinger's neuro ward. And uh, when we came here, we moved like Abraham in tents to 10 houses, packing, unpacking, packing, unhappy, packing. And then eventually, we get a house of our own. We who are serving God do not get loans, but the Lord provided a way out, a way of escape. Last 36 years, if I do not share his goodness, how faithful he was in every, at every turn, I am ungrateful. So I just walked up to tell all that. Thank you. So if there's anyone else, just walk up. Be bold. Because it is said in Genesis, if we don't glorify God, he will raise up stones to glorify him. Okay. So I know very well that God has worked in many ways in the life of each and everyone who is seated here. Because we have a very small community. So it's good, but you can uh, share it and glorify God in a different time as the time permits. So. I want to conclude today's message. I want to remind you again God, about God's unwavering love, His faithfulness and mercy. I also encourage you all to entrust your lives, struggles and the future in God's capable hands. Knowing that He will sustain them with His steadfast love. So, this is what the Lord wants to share with you all. It's not, not about sharing. He wants, you to, he wants me to remind you of this. All this I shared today, we all know. But he wanted me to remind this, to encourage each and every one of you all so that we will walk uprightly with him, not falling away. So shall we all stand up? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, the Holy Spirit, for being with us all throughout our lives, for your faithful love, for your mercies, which are new every morning. We bless your holy name, Lord. Even as we leave from this place, Lord, we commit our lives to your precious hand, Lord, knowing very well that you are going to fulfill each and every promise that you have made for each and every one of us. You might think your, delay, your promise is getting delayed, but God is un God. We worship a God who is unchangeable, who is unchanging. Just be rest assured of that. Lord, we bless your name, Lord. We commit each and every one of our, of your children who is here to your precious hand. Cover each of them with your precious blood, Lord. 
guide them, lead them, protect them, Lord. Teach them your ways, Lord. Remind them your ways, Lord. How faithful, how merciful you have been with them, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All this we pray in your mighty and precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you. May God bless you.